Okay, so, so we talked about food venience and food service, so the restaurant industry and the degree to which we're in there. Um, there's a lot of stuff here and there's a lot of stuff going on in technology and uh, the consumer is evolving all the time and becoming you know, very demanding in terms of what they expect. Uh, are we as an industry moving fast enough to stay uh, in touch with the digital lifestyles of our consumers? You know, Matt, you know, you know a hell of a lot about this area. I mean, do you think the industry, this industry, is moving fast enough? I think it's easier for a lot of smaller operators within coffee shops and so on. I think there's more legacy with a lot of the fuel we to really be uh, nimble and fast uh, on new technology. Uh, I think there are, there are examples, definitely. Uh, and there are examples, I think uh, Victor has some good things going on in the Philippines. Uh, we see a lot of uh, good things in, in Asian markets. Um, but I think as an industry, I think there's, there's more. Uh, mm, yeah, definitely, yeah. Um, and I think it, it links very closely with, uh, with the trend of food convenience. I think uh, you have to have good technology backing up the, the food convenience uh, offering that you have. Uh, make it more convenient to customers, uh, make it frictionless as, we, uh, as you mentioned. Uh, and I suppose you know, this, this, this kind of investment in technology of the industry is critical if we're going to keep taking spend from the restaurants, isn't it? You know, because they're not sitting on their laurel, resting on their laurels, are they? You know, they're investing, McDonald's are investing an awful lot, I, I hear, in their, their new touchscreen platforms. And uh, you know, I guess the industry needs to, needs to this industry needs to, needs to be doing that too. Yeah, and to Matt's point, it, it's hard in big companies to innovate uh, because we have a lot of legacy IT. And that takes a lot of effort. I think in my role, I probably spend a quarter of my time on IT and I never signed up for that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's, it's so important because uh, customers expect it it enhances the experience, um, but also there I think the key is, in our view, to innovate from the customer up. Uh, what, what do they want, what solves a real issue, what adds real, real value. So it's not about what's possible, uh, but what, what are people looking for. And in, in our culture we try to make sure the markets innovate. Uh, we globalize local proven success, uh, and more and more we see the future happening first in Asia. Uh, there's some very exciting concepts there. Mm. Uh, that, that will probably go global uh, the other way, uh, not from the US flying west, but uh, from China, from the east, uh, coming the other way. And you're in a very strong position to see what's happening in China. And I sometimes think that we're not really, we're very focused on Amazon, we're not really focused on Alibaba, true. are we? Yeah, true, because some of the exciting concept is bingo box. In China, it's a store without people. It is remarkable. Uh, we all probably have seen the Amazon Go mm -hmm. uh, development, but this is very exciting and also yeah, a lot of things, uh, the whole um, online ordering delivery in China. Our colleagues in the business in China, they, they live a digital lifestyle. Uh, they never go shopping. Uh, everything gets delivered. Uh, and it's, it's remarkable. Uh, and, and that's where we can learn from. Uh, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Now, Victor, we were talking about the, uh, the recent election in the Philippines, or recent elections in the Philippines, and you were saying Facebook is absolutely critical. Is that the case for convenience retail and, and retail in general in the Philippines as well? Yes, uh, well, Facebook uh, a couple of years ago uh, made a deal with the telcos to give Facebook for free, uh, the data for Facebook for free, which in a country with went from 10% data penetration to 50% data penetration, that changed the outcome of the election. But, and, um, but, but it, it, it also meant a lot of our customers were online. Um, but uh, so, of course, yes, you have a Facebook page with two million uh, followers. But uh, what's critical is to be able to act on stuff you put out. And so we've invested in technology that allows us, for example, to uh, give out barcodes on Facebook that can be redeemed at the store. Um, and if the offer is very good, that gets shared uh, and seen by millions. Um, it's organic. Um, so the, 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 that's exciting stuff. Um, but on the technology front, I think the opportunity, first of all, I don't think convenience stores will ever be, uh, fuel aside, will ever be disrupted. Uh, it's, 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 in the Philippines, it's a dollar, uh, two dollars to deliver. Our average transaction is a dollar. So how can you disrupt that? Uh, second is that we could be the disruptors. I think it's a lot, if you look at the online guys now, they're going offline, right? Alibaba, Amazon. You know what? It's a lot easier for us to go online than for them to go offline. To build out the real estate just takes years. I don't care how much money you have. Um, how hard is it to go online? It's not very. So uh, we're looking at that, and I think, well, further, the, the opportunity is greatest in emerging mark, emerging unbanked markets. Online means you have to pay. You have a credit card. If you're unbanked, you have to go to a convenience store. We take 
over 50% of all e-money transactions in the Philippines, 7-Eleven, over 50%. So we're looking, how do we leverage that now? Uh, in, in Taiwan, convenience stores process half of all package deliveries of the entire market. So very interesting opportunities. Another aspect, Dan, of the technology side is we, we find it in what I would call the back office. So things like rostering, reordering, price books, um, that mar helping your margin, your profit and loss account, and getting your margin on your food. We've done an awful lot of work in that area, and I think that is part of what we need to do in terms of it's more difficult to get staff now, so you need to make sure you have the right people on at the right time and to sort of minimize your, your weight spend and to maximize your margin. So that's another area of technology that sometimes gets overlooked, and it's a really important part of our business. I think also capabilities. Yeah. I think I, I meet a lot of retailers, uh, which is really concerned about the, the skills that they yeah. have within their own organization. Yeah. And I think a lot of the, the new brands that emerged, I mean, they, they think digital first, yeah. and it's a very young digital-minded <coughs> team mm -hmm. that, uh, that brings something like that to the market. And I think a lot of the bigger ones mm -hmm. have a concern in terms of what kind of capabilities they have. Yeah. Uh, not just on digital marketing, but the digital, which is a lot. I mean, it's operations as well. Yeah. 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 I think the other thing we find transformational is data to run category management. Uh, we have this new category management portal. It's extraordinary because yeah, mm -hmm. in the past, uh, you know, you would waste half your money on a marketing program, but you and the boss didn't know which half. Uh, these, these days, these days, yeah. it's no longer acceptable yeah. because you can easily see which promotion actually adds value, mm -hmm. which is merely time shifting. Where are you giving away margin uh, for no reason? Uh, so the whole profession of category management is evolving, mm -hmm. and these things were not possible. Uh, data processing, the speed, storage. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're logging every transaction in 22 countries in one database. Uh, there's billions of transactions. We can we can slice and dice it any way we want. Yeah. Uh, so suddenly the constraint is, I mean, how smart is your question and what are you going to do with the answer? Exactly. Uh, so exactly. it's a totally exactly. different skill set yeah. and, and we're just about to learn uh, how to leverage that. Yeah. But it's transformational. Are, are there challenges as far as regulation is concerned, uh, Matt's, in this area? You know, because obviously I know in the EU we've got new regulation coming next year in terms of for, for data, you know, data controllers, haven't we? Which the industry has to, you know, watch carefully. Are there some challenges there for us? Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's a challenge for all companies that has to sort of take that step. Uh, we talk about live loyalty yeah. and uh, live loyalty being a lot. I mean, it's not just real-time data for yeah. your, your marketing teams or your category teams. It's uh, Now it's live loyalty. It's bring, really bringing real-time data out to the customers. Yeah. Uh, being able to, to see what kind of data you have on, on, yeah. on me. Uh, to be able to delete my profile, uh, change and edit my consents uh, on a very granular uh, level. Uh, so it takes uh, it takes a lot for a retailer, which is the data controls, as well as as all the partners and suppliers that they have. I do think with all the extra changes like that, and sort of there's things like sugar tax, there's the cigarette taxes and various regulation changes, it's becoming more and more difficult to be a small independent player. You need to align yourself to a bigger group like the 7-Elevens or the brands like that are, are be part of a bigger group that can look after your GDPR and all those other regulations. So it's, it's a bit changing industry.